Nothing is certain in the world of murder mysteries, and there's no exception with this film. Hey everybody, it's Sebastian Sintron here at the premiere of Knives Out, where we got to interview some of the amazing cast, as you can see behind me, and we're going to give you all of the scoop right here on The Nocturnal. How's it this going, sir? Nice to see you. How are you? Okay, so you have to say you were the first person that agreed to sign up for this film. Am I Someone right? Someone just told me that. Yeah. Yeah. So what was it about the script that made you immediately want to say yes? Oh, because it's brilliant. It just, just it was brilliant. It was we, you rarely get to read a script as good as that, as funny as that, as original as that, and so I was just it was a yes. And the, working with the director, what was that like? Um, he's one of the best directors around. Um, he's a great writer, which really helps. Uh, he knows what he wants. He is brilliant at directing large bunch of actors. That's is a real rare skill amongst actors. I mean directors. Um, I kind of put him up there with Robert Altman and Hal Hartley. I think he's just like he's really got it. Were there any parallels between your character who plays you'd play the detective and now in Agatha Christie's books the famous detective? Oh, uh, we ripped it off. Of course okay. we did. I mean, I mean, I watched all those movies. I watched Peter Ustinov as a kid in the, the Agatha Christie movies and, and and Albert Finney and people like that. And so. I was a big fan of those, so we took little bits of them, yeah. I have to say, your shoes and your suit, fire. The outfit is fire. Whoever your stylist is, give them a shout out because it's great. Uh, tell me about your character and what made you want to say yes to the um, Yeah, my character is pretty unlikable, kind of a despicable human being, if we're being honest, but um, those are the most fun characters to play because you get to be not yourself. Um, and then also, obviously, the chance to work with these incredible actors and Ryan Johnson. It's a once in a lifetime I heard, opportunity. I heard your character is on his phone a lot, and even in the poster, you're, we're, we see yeah, him, yeah. like, he's holding a phone. Yes. What can you tell us about the parallels that, you know, because kids nowadays are always on their phone. I mean, I am, we all are. What can you tell us about, was that a character choice or was that, like, the director's choice? Um, that was definitely the director's choice. Um, that's just a part of the character. And um, you know, I think it is an important topic to discuss, especially in today's generation where everything revolves around your phone. Um, and I think it's important to be in the moment uh, because Jacob's definitely not. I try to be as much as I can. For sure, and I think it's a cool way to, because I know this movie pays homage to Agatha Christie's books, which are, you know, from the past, so I think it's a cool way of keeping it fresh and modern. Are there any, any other ways that the film does that? Um, yeah, for sure, not in just the modern way, but um, it talks about modern issues and of immigration and class difference, and um, I think Ryan Johnson did a beautiful job of incorporating all of that, not just the not just slapping a new uh, skin on it, but changing the, the foundation. Right. And now, last but not least, working with this amazing cast. I mean, we have Jamie Lee Curtis right over here. We just spoke to Daniel Craig. What was that like? It's such a, and getting that all together, you know? Yeah, it was such a learning experience for me and just so awesome and a little nerve-wracking at first, but. I bet. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. But You're like the youngest in the cast and you get to work with these incredible actors. Was there anything you learned from them? Yeah, absolutely. Just the way, um, just the way all of them are as, as people. And, um, I, I really love Jamie Lee Curtis and how she became the mother on set and how she like adopted the people who lived at the house and she, she the way she incorporated herself in um, in in her character and just the simple things that she did and it was fun because there were these giant scenes with all these actors and you know once there because there's so many actors not everyone has a lot of lines so sometimes I could just sit back and watch everybody and see um, the little things that they do so. of course well I mean they're all amazing you're amazing so I'm sure this is a great experience thank you so much to talk for talking to us nice to meet you, thank you. Pretend like I know what millennials need. You know what I mean? Like that would be presumptuous. Um, I will tell you that this is as good a movie as you will ever see. And I'm not saying there aren't great movies being made. This is a great movie. So, in the world where we think, oh, here's what I would say. <clears throat> Millennials are famous for the amount of digital input and output on a 
sort of rapid level all day long. You know what I mean? You guys know how to drive those devices better than anybody. This is a very intricate puzzle and you have to put your phone down. Like this is a movie you have to like put everything down, get the popcorn, sit down and listen and watch and you will be happy and you will understand that old fashioned kind of puzzle making is also a very satisfying, it's not, it's a different dopamine hit, but it's a very satisfying one. Thank a little bit unrelated, but I have to congratulate you. I know you opened up recently to Variety about your 20 years sobriety. Yeah. I am doing a 100 day challenge myself. Oh. So I have been sober for around 99 days you, now. Wow. And I, I, it's been one of the most like eye-opening clarity oh, things. Are you going to write about it? I should. I should. And I, I read your thing and I, you know, it was amazing and inspiring and I think it's something that I want to continue because in the 100 days I've noticed so much you know, clarity and self-awareness that I don't think I ever felt before. So I think if I'm like, damn, if I felt if I've felt like this for a hundred days, I could only imagine what I must feel like after a year, and I can't even imagine after 20 years like yourself. So it's it's inspiring well, and it's incredible. I, the only secret I will tell you is you only have to do it one day at a time. I think people hear a hundred day challenge and they're like, I can't do that. Right. But if they can do a day challenge, that's one day. That's and one day. so. It, it, it sort of breaks it down a little into like that bigger number, but my favorite part about being sober is when you look in the mirror now, there's a clarity to who you're looking at. Yes. You know, you're looking at the problem, but you're also looking at the solution. Yes. It's in you. It's not in somebody else. It's not about the girlfriend or the boyfriend or the mother or the father or the boss. It's about you. And taking that responsibility is sobriety. Like. I can look in a mirror. I'm not a perfect person. I'm flawed. I'm contradictory. Some people hate me, but I can look in the mirror. And that is worth everything to me. I love that. Thank you so much. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you. Besos desde el estreno de Knives Out. Eh, nos vemos en el cine. ¿Cómo se siente estar parte de este elenco? Maravilloso, es un, es un sueño. Me Son encanta. gente muy linda y lo pasamos súper bien trabajando juntos y fue una experiencia muy bonita, muy bonita. Muchas gracias. This, this film, this whodunit genre, what inspired you to tell this particular story? So I love Agatha Christie. I want, I've always wanted to do a straight up whodunit. I decided it'd be fun to do an original Who Done It set in America in 2019. That was kind of the whole. Sorry about that. Really? Sorry, kind of the whole thing behind it. Did you draw any inspiration from past movies like Charade or Clue? Completely. I love that you called out Charade. That's all, that's so good. I uh, that. Yeah, so good. I mean, I, yeah. And there's a movie called Last of Sheila from the 70s. It's great. Um, Death on the Nile, Evil Under the Sun. I mean, I, I'm a Who Done It junkie. I watch everything that comes out, and I love it all. And so the idea of kind of being able to work all that stuff in there that seemed like it'd be a blast. You said it took you 10 years yeah. to really do this movie how you wanted to. Yeah. Any scenes that you filmed that didn't make it that you wish did? Yeah and they're gonna be on the home video there's a couple of really good ones we had to drop for pacing so it's they're really fun those are always heartbreakers. Tell me a little bit about what it was like getting this whole entire cast together. I mean, we started with Daniel Craig. Once you got Daniel Craig in your movie, everybody wants to be in your movie. It's a magical thing that happens. Uh, and then, yeah, we got this amazing all-star cast, and they were all, we all had so much fun when we were making the movie. Oh, what's up? The, the lights. lights. <laughs> the ugly lights. Uh, we all had just a blast, man. We were in this house in the middle of New England, and we, it was like it, it felt like summer camp for movie stars. It was crazy. And now Anna the Armas, you know, this newcomer, but she's a force to be reckoned with. Yeah. Tell us about you know having her as part of the cast and working with her and you know she plays a big part yeah and is I mean in many ways and is like the main character in the movie and she's she's fairly new to American audiences she's done some great work in Blade Runner and a few other movies but that she's had a much longer career she's worked in Spain and she's she's international audiences know her much better um, I'm so excited for audiences to see her in this this is a role that I haven't quite seen her in before and she really does step into the center of this crazy cast and she's really the center of the movie um, and she did such a good job I'm so proud of her. So how exciting is it to be here tonight? You know, this movie plays homage to a lot of the murder mysteries of books and Agatha Christie. What are your thoughts on that? I'm totally overwhelmed by it all. No, I, I have no idea. I, I uh, 
I never read the script. They brought me up. Uh, I, w I replaced an actor, a wonderful actor by the name of Ricky Jay, and uh, he didn't he didn't make it. And the director had to go get somebody else, so they got me. But uh, I didn't know what it was all about. They flew me up to Massachusetts, and I worked for a couple of days. But uh, I never read the script. And now, uh, this this is a phenomenal ensemble. I, oh, I'm sure you would agree. Yeah. What was it like working with such amazing, you know, actors I and actresses? Didn't. I I worked with three or four different people. That was it. Okay. And uh, it, it's not a, if I'm in there for three or four minutes. That's a lot. I don't think I'm in this movie very long, very long at all. Well, we're gonna. Ha I'm watching the movie tonight, so I guess we shall see. Is there anything we should look forward to about your character? Oh well, make sure my fly is zipped. You think like that, you know? I don't want to, you know, <laughs> call attention to the shortest thing around. Right. Okay, uh, <laughs> well, thank you so much. It was all very right. nice to meet you. All thank right. you for talking to us, Sal. Tell me a little bit about your character and what it entails. Uh, well, I'm the grandmother of them all, or the grandmother mother, mother, and, and mother, um, Christopher Plummer's mom. So you could say that without me, they wouldn't be able to have the movie. Now, I know this movie pays homage to a lot of Agatha Christie's inspired murder mystery films. Does this movie bring that? Oh, and more. And more. Have you seen it yet? Not yet. I'm watching it tonight, tonight so oh, I'm good. excited. I wish we could talk afterwards and just to and see hear what, what you have to say and if like, you can figure out what's going on. Are there some Easter eggs from any of the books? Uh, there may be. Okay. Now, working with this ensemble, what was that like? Oh, well, it's fabulous to work with. Well, it's fabulous to work. Let's be serious. Period. Yes. But it's very nice to work with such high-profile people and always to meet new people and have new experiences. Now, tell me a little bit about the director's take on this film because I know he, you know, coming from the Star Wars movie and now he's doing this whodunit style type of film. What was your, your take on that? Well, actually, before Star Wars, he did Looper and Brick and the Brothers yes. Bloom, and all of his movies are kind of problem-solving movies. You know, he's a big game player, and so that's what's so great about this is that, you know, it's a story about a murder mystery writer, and then there's all those things that that guy had done, you know, and so Brian's brain, he's, first of all, he's just so stylized. If you've, I don't know whether you've ever seen the other movies, but they're all beautiful to look at, and they all look really different from each other. Is there anything that in particular that stood out to you while filming? We all had a very good time on it. We, it was cold. We were shooting outside Boston. It was snowing. Uh, and and um, so that was its own thing. Uh, and then, of course, we were shooting, when you see it, in this amazing mansion on this amazing plot of land, you know, that's so beautiful. And you're like, oh, my God, people really live like yeah. this. This is amazing. That's amazing. I, I saw the trailer, and it looked amazing. Oh. So now I'm excited to actually see the film and well, take and when a look. you see yeah. it in the set decoration and the the uh, the way it's all designed it is there's so many things to look at it I saw it again last night the for details. the second time and I, there were so many things I hadn't seen the first time I'm looking forward again to seeing it well I'm, I'm excited to look out for those things and I'll be sure to keep an eye out for all of those details and like yes. you said the set design yeah, the, stuff, the stuff that's on the set since since he's a popular author who's done all these different books there are all all these things are mementos from things that he has done before and it's really stunning. Maybe we'll see the the ten little Indians from <laughs> from the her book, right? Uh, yeah, yeah that, that, would, that could happen. That could happen. All <laughs> right. all kinds of cool things. Well, it was very nice talking to you. Nice Thank you so much you. for Thank your time. You. Appreciate Thanks it. So you were in charge of the score for this movie. Tell me about the inspiration. We, um, you know, early on Ryan was talking about doing a big classical orchestral score. We were, we were listening to some of our favorite scores from the late 50s, early 60s, kind of when, you know, the, the scores that are like really melodic, really motif heavy. Um, so that, that was kind of just the beginnings of starting to feel like, okay, what is this going to be? And then taking that and kind of like turning it on its head a little bit, kind of bringing weird approaches and different playing styles to it. When you read the script, was there something that immediately you kind of went and like, okay, you had an idea of what you wanted it to sound like? I what mean, is that process like? Yeah, well, so Ryan told me his idea for the movie really early on and described the opening scene, which is like just a music scene. Like the whole movie starts with like a two minute music piece that sort of sets everything up. And um, when he described that to me, I, I could immediately picture 
you know, this idea. Um, and it, it kind of changed as as we went through the, the whole process of shooting it and editing it. But, um, but I remember like years and years ago just being compelled by this scene and starting to think about this string piece that I was going to write for it. Now the movie itself I know pays homage to a lot of movies, the murder mystery movies based on Agatha Christie books. Um, what is your take on it and how do you feel about that? Yeah, I mean, I love that genre, uh, but even movies like that maybe wouldn't totally be considered, you know, like a whodunit, but kind of like Sleuth was a favorite movie growing up. Um, yeah, it's it's just a, it's so much fun. It's a fun ride, but also it's, uh, you know, it, you get to engage your brain and kind of play along with this game of like what is going on. And I'm sure it affects the score too, because you get to make it a little bit more suspenseful. And I, I personally believe that the score really kind of gives us that feeling throughout the entire movie. It's what like gives us those levels and keeps us at the edge of our seat. Sure. So tell me, tell me about that and the suspense that, you know, the score is going to bring to this. Yeah, well, so there, I mean, it's a really fun movie, but there is this suspense thing continuing through the whole thing. So the, I think the score's job is to keep the audience engaged with that unsettled tension um, while still kind of like providing the, you know, the platform for the, for the actors to dance around on and just, you know, kind of eat it up. Well, sounds fun, honestly, and I can't wait to watch it and listen to the amazing stuff you composed. Thank you so much. Very nice Thanks. to meet you. Nice Thank you for your you. time. Yeah, I appreciate yeah. it. Tell me a little bit about the character. Well, I actually play a state trooper who's sort of assigned to help the detective. Okay. Um, and, um, you know, you could argue that uh, the detective, Benoit Blanc, played by Mr. Daniel Craig, mm -hmm. shows up only uh, after it becomes apparent that I'm not doing my job very well. Interesting. You've worked, you've worked with the director before in other films, and how was it like this time around, and what makes it different? You know, it really wasn't that different. It was just that there were a whole bunch of new people who looked kind of familiar, like these actors who I sort of have seen before. And well, they this is all... an amazing ensemble. I mean, look at everybody. <laughs> they were all hanging out, too. It was kind of wild. <laughs> how was that like getting to be with these amazing group of people? It's just, uh, it's getting to be... It's getting to hang out with your heroes and then become their friends. So it's the best thing in the world. And you get to do this for a living. How great is that? Right? I, it's a dream come true. Now tell me, this film pays homage to Agatha Christie and her murder mystery books and novels. Are there any Easter eggs that we're going to be able to see throughout the film? Anything we should look out for? Oh, well, if they, if there were, I, I couldn't tell you. They wouldn't be Easter eggs anymore. So you got to watch it probably twice, right? Right. Okay, well, sir, it was nice to meet My you. Pleasure. Thank you Thank for you your so time. Much. Can you guys believe that I just spoke to Daniel Craig and Jamie Lee Curtis? Thank you so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. See you guys next time.